There's a reason mashed potatoes regularly sit in the number one spot on the list of America's favorite Thanksgiving side dishes. They're somehow creamy and fluffy at the same time, delectably buttery, and happen to provide the perfect vehicle for gravy. But great potatoes shouldn't be reserved for one day a year, whether it's a huge holiday feast or just a weekday dinner with the kids. You want to put your best foot forward when it comes to this beloved side dish. Here's how. The potato matters. First things first, you have to choose the best potatoes for mashing if you want the best mashed potatoes. You have two solid choices. Russets, also called Idaho, are high in starch, have low moisture content, and don't hold their shape well, which works to your advantage for mashing to light, fluffy perfection. Yukon Golds, which have a medium starchiness, are sometimes preferred over russets for their creaminess and flavor, but can lack fluffiness. To keep your mashed potatoes light as air while getting a flavor boost at the same time, use equal parts russet and Yukon Golds. Cooking is key. Boiling a pot of potatoes might seem as simple as boiling water, but there's a bit more to it than that. To start, you want to be sure to cut the potatoes into similarly sized pieces, otherwise they'll cook unevenly. Then, unlike with spaghetti, where you let the pot come to a boil before adding the pasta, you want to start the cooking process with the potatoes in the water. And make sure the water is cold to ensure the whole pot comes up to temperature together and salty. Say no to glue. Mashed potatoes are supposed to be creamy and fluffy, not gummy and gluey. A few lumps can be overlooked, some even prefer it. But a bowl of paste-like potatoes just crosses the line. The most likely reason mashed potatoes go from heavenly clouds to a gluey mess is because they're overprocessed. While it might be tempting to make quick work of a big batch with a food processor or a hand mixer, it's not the best for the tubers. The machines break down the potato cells, which causes a release of starch, not optimal for keeping things airy. Tools of the trade. For rustic mashed potatoes, a handheld masher or even a fork works just fine. This method is best for small batches when you can't be bothered to bust out the more complicated tools. For smoothish potatoes, a stand mixer fitted with a paddle attachment is a good way to go. Because the paddle doesn't have sharp edges, it won't give you a totally smooth consistency, but it also doesn't cause the dreaded release of starch. It's particularly useful for larger batches. For the smoothest potatoes, drag your food mill or ricer out from the back of the cabinet. These tools will give you the fluffiest result, and bonus, if you don't feel like peeling potatoes, they'll do the work for you. Fluffy Secrets Before you run those russets through the ricer, there are two things you need to do if your goal is the fluffiest mashed potatoes you ever did see. First, after you've boiled the potatoes, drain the water from the pot. Then return the drained potatoes to the same pot without the lid, and put it back over medium-low heat to allow any remaining water to evaporate. Then second, sprinkle a pinch of baking powder over the potatoes. This helps to form air pockets while mashing, and voila, you've got extra fluff. Better Butter Hack Most of us make mashed potatoes by adding cold butter and milk or cream to the bowl and going to town with the masher. If we're feeling fancy, maybe we simmer the milk and melted butter together on the stovetop first. That seems like a lot of extra work, but here's a case for actually dirtying two extra pans. And the butterific end result makes it more than worth our while. Chef and cookbook author Diane Morgan explained the reasons to Food 52, saying that the better method is to heat the butter and milk separately and add the warmed butter to the potatoes first. She revealed, the butter fat absorbs into the cells of the potato, which have swelled and pulled apart from one another. Then the milk loosens and flavors the potatoes. That means you end up with a butterier tasting potato dish. Sold. Punch up the cream. By infusing your cream or milk with additional flavors while simmering, you can add another layer of goodness to the final dish. Think about things like crushed raw garlic or chopped shallots or peppers, hearty herbs like rosemary, thyme, or bay leaves, or a cautious serving of whole spices like peppercorns. Think inside the box. Next time you make potatoes, think inside the box. The broth box, that is. When you make soup, you probably use broth as your base for extra flavor, so why not do the same for your mashed potatoes? Chicken or vegetable broth is a great cooking liquid and adds a ton of flavor to the potatoes in the cooking process. Just follow the same method you usually would, bringing the broth and potatoes to a boil together. Add more flavor. There are endless ways to jazz up an otherwise ho-hum batch of potatoes. Adding a bit of tanginess gives this classic a whole new life. Think about additions like cream cheese or sour cream, which add a ton of extra creaminess, too. Herbs are another great option. Chives, basil, tarragon, or parsley will give mashed potatoes a vibrant, fresh flavor. Of course, you really can't go wrong with cheese. Oh, and don't forget the bacon. Never forget the bacon.
Thanks for watching. Click the mashed icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this other cool stuff we know you'll love too.